is that going to work for us? Righto, finally. Not sure quite how I screwed that up, um, but we're back. Okay, just get myself slightly rearranged down here. Uh, so I can close that. It's right here. It lives! Exactly. Uh, I can close that one. Hokey dokey. Okie dokie dokie. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. That's right, we're only an hour behind schedule, which I guess makes up for the fact that we move forward an hour with the uh, uh, summertime. Uh, should be all good now. Just reply to the people that were letting me know that we had a problem. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's much better. Ah. Oh. And now I can see something useful. So the um, uh, the Atom Mini Pro, uh, before when the key was wrong, it was saying on air, um, but it was a blinking red light instead of a solid red light. But it didn't tell me an error. Um, but now that it's actually connected properly, it goes to a solid red light. So I'll try and remember that for the next time that this happens when uh, Twitch have a, a terrible data link and have to reset everything. Now, um, what... I was busy telling uh, Dev Null uh, before. Oh, hang on! Someone's saying that they still can't join. Um, let me just say, uh, bro, bro, uh, refresh. It should be okay now. Um, a couple of other people have joined already. Might just take a little while to propagate through the intertubes. Okay. Hey, Andy Magic Knight, Leiden, Keith Kanan, Rafi. Should say hello to everyone. It's always a good idea as well. Um, great to have you guys following along. It's much more fun than when I was uh, talking to Dev Null earlier and thinking, oh, man, nobody wants to, yeah, to tune in this week. Um, and I just thought, well, maybe it's the time shift and because I started a bit later and blah, blah, blah. But anyway. You're here now, so that's all good. So, um, my goal today is really to consolidate what we've been working on over the past few weeks. So we kind of, we already uh, have uh, it working uh, quite well. Hey, LGB, hey, um, Targa's Um And yeah, to, to try and bed things down. So the... Uh, Hang on, I think that's the lad. Just give me a second. Both the uh, uh, the son uh, and the cat wanted to come in and say hello. Uh, Lydon23 is saying, so, did you not receive a warning that the stream is not online? Um, correct, I didn't. Uh, well, rather, I didn't. I didn't recognize it as a warning because it was just the um, uh, the on-air light on the Ata Mini Pro blinks red instead of going solid red, um, which is, yes, annoying. Um, and as Rafi points out, fancy green screen, yes. So the... Uh, if I do, yes, I now have a mostly fancy green screen. I need to fix the bit where the, uh, it's not hanging neatly uh, behind one side. I'll have to have a bit of a, a think about how I rearrange all of that uh, up there. But um, it's already a uh, a bit of an improvement uh, so that we can just leave my nog without it covering everything up the whole time. Um, hey, Herdware, welcome along as well. So um, what we were trying to do or rather what i was talking to dev null about before we actually got online uh, and, and someone kindly pointed out 
So the previous uh, settings that we we're using to optimize uh, the performance was somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah, um, Target says cats will increase popularity for videos. Let them come in. Yeah, he likes to mostly sit below the um, uh, the camera unless I'm having a work meeting, uh, and then there'll be bits of cat will kind of poke up around at the, the the bottom of the um, uh, the thing. Um, we need to need to find out what's going on with the um, uh, the the background level. The the camera I think is still doing a bit of um, hunting around, and the, the green bleeds through again because the um, the cloth isn't hanging straight. It's not getting a, a perfect key, but that's all right. We'll get there, um, and it's still better than having the uh, uh, the solid piece uh, blocked out. And hopefully, uh, uh, Dev will be pleased to to no, no longer be seeing the uh, uh, the bed sheet, as he liked to call it, uh, behind me. Um, Anyway, so um, this is what we had before. So we kind of had a, a real limit. I think we decided that about 1.7 was the, the best reliable speed that we could hope for. Um, and 1.6 was a bit marginal. You can see there's a couple of the peaks that are getting uh, really quite close to each other. Uh, and 1.5 is just a, a mess. Um, although again, as we go faster, we have to turn down this uh, third coefficient closer to um, uh, to zero. We can see actually having none of it uh, doesn't help us too much. Having it a little bit helps, um, but at one five, it's still you know the the peaks are not well enough resolved. But what I realised was if we increase the second coefficient, uh, which is kind of always what the intention of the second coefficient was, but you could uh, have it turned up higher than the um, uh, the first coefficient uh, and that it should uh, give a better result. We can see we can kind of almost get one five to work but we still have a, a split peak on the first one that means it's getting too close to the second one and at this data rate we can only improve it a little bit by shifting because it starts behaving a bit weirdly otherwise. I mean, that, uh, uh, yeah, see, that's... See, it's a bit, there must be some funny thing in my logic that's kind of uh, messing with things here. Um, so 5A and FB, it's actually not looking too bad, you know? Um, but we can't... It's, refusing to behave below that. So my gut feeling is that 1.5 is probably still a little bit too tight. Um, but if we go back to 1.6, which is still one better than we had before, we need to then twiddle things. Look at that. That, to me, looks really, really nice. Uh, and so that should let us get a little bit more than the uh, uh, the Pi megabytes or at least it it gives us some margin uh for the pi megabytes because if we drop back to one seven um which is what we were going to use for the first half of the disk more or less um that now actually looks fantastic right uh, we've got these beautifully res uh, resolved peaks uh and if in contrast we wind that back down to what we had of the five five we can see it's actually quite noticeably messier Uh, so this is a, a real improvement. Um, but other than that, uh, there's not too much else that we're, uh, we're changing. And probably what it is that we probably won't change the um, uh, the capacity of the disk to try and increase it anymore to take advantage of that. People writing demos and stuff can do whatever they feel like to try and squeeze extra on and hope that their disk and drive is good enough. Um, but we, we'll stick with uh, with slightly conservative uh you know uh pi megabytes hey prowse seven welcome along glad you can join us um and oh, there's some other folks have just popped in as well so howdy to you guys as well um so the next trick that we need to do is make sure that everything actually still works properly uh so i'm just going to uh, and i can now switch to that view 
Right, so let's just make sure that I really am running the the latest bit stream. Uh, yep, we've now got the latest bit stream happening there. Um, so we will go in and tell it internal drive. Now, if we do a directory of this, it will balk, right? Um, DD formatted. So we're going to actually format using the um, the normal C sixty five DOS and see whether that still works, um, or whether I've managed to break things in having all of this stuff to be able to switch between um, DD and HD. Now, of course, C sixty five DOS doesn't know how to switch the data rate, and it's possible that I have. Well, actually, no, because we've just loaded a fresh bitstream, right? So um, because we haven't messed with uh, HD disks, it should be okay. Um, now, Tigers is saying, could you check if different drives could handle the increased read-write speeds? Yeah, so that's something else that we should totally do. And I might even, uh, while we're on this stream today, duck out to the shed uh, and grab some drives from my pile of drives. Um, I'm also actually interested to see, because um, I've got a, an ED drive here. Um, and even if we drive it as a HD drive, it might be that it actually has better tolerance as well. Um, it would just be interesting, really, for, for curiosity uh, to see. But what we'll probably do is attack that if I need to synthesize a new bitstream, which takes a while, uh, then we can play around with different drives and, uh, and check things out. Um, the other thing that we'll do... Um, so how many of you fine folks have got... Um, dev kits there because I can supply you with a bitstream and a, um, a test program via discord uh, and you can actually chuck a HD disk in and you can try some of this stuff yourselves and, and throw us some uh, images from running the uh, the histogram stuff um, that would be really good as well Andy Magic Knight says no <laughs> oh dear um, have you got a, um, a Nexus board, Andy? Um, we haven't made an adapter board for floppies on the Nexus board, but it would be possible to do, by the way, to connect a real three and a half inch floppy drive to it. Okay, so the disk claims to have been formatted. And this is looking good. Um, Andy Magic Knight says, I won a Nexus board by losing the spiral. Excellent. <laughs> um, and Targus also says he doesn't have a board either, but uh, has a Mega 65 ordered from Trans. Excellent. There's yeah, that frustrating waiting now, right? Uh, to uh, to get the machine. And, and hopefully it won't disappoint when it comes, right? It is. It's just really good fun to have the um, uh, the machine, just to, to, to have a, a brand new real 8-bit machine. Um, it is. It's just really, really lovely. So let's just try and save something on the disk as well. Remember that on the C65 you don't need comma eight. Yeah, see, now this is where things have gone wonky. Um, so pretty sure I've screwed something up uh, in the right selection logic. Andy at Magic Knight says, I've got one of the first 400 uh, batch order though. Excellent. Um, and yeah, let, let's hope that Chippergeddon doesn't cause any further unnecessary, undesirable delays uh, with the machines. And actually, it's worth mentioning, I don't think we've actually kind of talked about the effect that Chippergeddon has had, not just on timelines, but actually on price, um, that a lot of the components that are on the Mega 65 mainboard um, are really hard to source at the moment. And of course, the laws of supply and demand in a free market environment uh, means that lots of the components are actually more expensive than they otherwise would be. Uh, my gut feeling is it's probably added 50 to 100 euros to the final price just because components are more expensive at the moment uh, and we've had to spend a lot more time 
hunting around to get them and there's probably uh, extra contingency required uh, from Trends' side as well just to uh, to make sure that that will all uh, come in and you have to you know have things uh, you know in storage and things a lot more um, yeah so we've now tried that uh, right into the, the disk and we'll just make sure that there's not some funny mode that's gone on yes yeah, so it's it, it it's balked something up quite thoroughly balked something up so we need to investigate what the balkage is and how we fix it up um yeah uh, and people so kicking and saying he's also in the first 400 probably in the first 20 uh, though what order they will fill uh what yeah what order they will fill the orders in uh we don't know and, and, and that's true so trends um is a fantastic uh little company to work with well they're not that little either but then they're, they're not like a, a a thousand employee kind of mob uh and they still very much believe in uh, personal customer service, uh, which is part of why we've gone with them. Um, but a, a side effect of that um, is when they get a huge batch of orders like this, they're actually getting processed by hand. Uh, they actually, you know, go through and they send out the emails and things. Um, yeah, uh, Andy Magic Knight saying alphabetical. So Andy Magic Knight is first. Yeah, that's right. A A A A A A A A A Aardvark uh, Plumber Services. We used to have that kind of thing in the the phone book. Here, people trying to be first. Uh, in the um, the yellow pages listings for things, um, it was quite funny. Or A A A A A A A One Plus uh, Electrical Services or something. Um, but anyway, yeah. So um, there may be some perturbation of order order um, that comes from that. I I don't know. Um, and yeah, and just ask that you be patient and understanding, and you know your your, your machine will come. Um, and uh, so I, I don't know whether the 400 will all get sent out at once. My gut feeling actually is that the you know the, the PCBs will have to get made, the keyboards are already there, the cases are already there, the floppy drives are already there. Um, that it's actually going to be a progressive thing over a while anyway. Um, and that because they have other things that they need to do as well. So they'll have someone working on building machines. And I suspect that there's going to be you know some modest but reasonable number of uh, of machines built per day. Hopefully we'll be able to get some assembly videos, which would be really cool to. Uh, to show this thing uh, coming together that would be uh, fantastic um and yeah and and so yeah they'll come uh but yeah i, I wouldn't go betting the house on any specific date right um again and, and just chip again you know like we've had to uh, to deal with an issue where we couldn't source the real-time clock chip suddenly after originally uh you know so that with, with chip again right you have an order placed for chips and you go, excellent, yep. And they're coming, you know, in two weeks Tuesday. Uh, and then even up to the very last minute until they've actually dispatched from the chip supplier, um, some really big, more important customer who buys millions and bazillions of chips might say, oh, I desperately need to have more of that chip. Uh, and they will redirect the orders away from the little companies to the big ones um, to try and keep their key customers happy. Um, so, yeah these things can still happen to us. Andy Magic Knight says, we've waited 30 years, a few months won't kill us. It, that's right, statistically speaking, it's just in the noise, right? Um, uh, Kicking and obviously nothing will ship until the box and manual are final and printed too. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that needs to happen uh, as well. Um, that I think will be pretty fine. Uh, fortunately, it's chip again, not box again. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Lighten 23 is saying it's the same for network equipment. The big ones block the little ones away. Currently, lead times are over a year. Yeah, they are. And it's going to be interesting to kind of see how that goes. And of course, as each new batch of silicon comes out, it's going to be like seagulls over a bag of chips, right? Um, until they're all uh, depleted quite quickly. Uh, and so supply will, will come and go. We, we've seen this at work as well, uh, where I work now. This is a problem. Um, but anyway, back to things that are inside our control. Um, is let's try and find out what we've balked on this disk. Um, to do that, we need to be able to uh, pull the track in and look at it. Now we have a tool for doing that, 
but it only reads in about half a sector. Uh, so where we're writing to the directory, um, that's going to be on sector two or three on the disk. We're not going to be able to pick it up. So what I added in uh, a little while back uh, and is yet to be tested uh, is if we go to SD card IO, well, more than one, if we go to GS45, um, D Magic Floppy Mode. So we have an option code 0F uh, for DMagic. Uh, and if that is set, and we haven't had a floppy gap delivered into the CPU lately, um, we wait for it to come. Uh, DMagic fill pause for floppy. So DMagic can already pause for background audio DMA, right? So that you can be playing Amiga style music while you do a DMA and they, you know, it slows down your DMA a little bit, but the audio keeps playing without skipping. Um, and now we have this magic where we can actually wait for the floppy to see the next magnetic flux uh, inversion. And then it puts into the fill value uh, the last floppy gap. Now you, you could conceivably do something really, because the, the fill value is actually in the, the high byte of the source address. Um, you could conceivably make some horror DMA um, where you actually were doing a copy uh, and had this. So a copy in floppy mode, um, well, then it would go into to fill mode. So you know, this, wouldn't, you know, this weird thing where the source address would be changing dynamically based on what the floppy is reading. Um, it could have been really interesting for a piece of copy protection. Uh, but anyway, so in theory, this should work. So if we go to floppy test, uh, L copy. So we had already made this kind of fixed source L copy routine. So now we want to make one that does um, L copy floppy gaps. So we don't need a source address because the source address is going to get set uh, by this copy. Um, what we need to do though um, is uh, we need to set uh, this option code 0F. Um, now I could make a separate DMA list structure that has a different number of bytes, um, but that's a little bit of a pain in the bum. Um, so what we can do is this evil, evil, evil hack. Evil hack. Put the $OF code twice um, to tell dear magic to read floppy gaps instead of a normal copy. Um, so we, we don't even need to set the source address because it, it just gets ignored. Um, and we actually don't need to hold the source address because we're doing we want to do a fill. I think that should work. Floppy gaps. So we just tell it where it's going to, um, uh, to put it to. And in theory, this should get us 64K of gap lengths directly into the um, uh, the thing. Now we need to further tweak this so that it reads different tracks, um, but that's okay. So we will say, so number five, read raw track zero to there. 
okay. So things don't seem to have, uh, oh, what I should have shown you is, huh, I was here and I pressed five. So it reads the data. Um, that was encouragingly reasonable looking. Um, so let's go monitor save dash a five um, track zero gaps dot we'll just put a dot gap file just for oh that's right dash l dev oops uh, tdy2 it must be yep so hopefully when we look in this file, it won't be all zeros or all something stupid. It will be useful data, which it looks a little bit like. Why are we only getting one byte out of every 16 useful? Now that's a good question. Um, could just be that the gaps are too long because um, if it's longer than FF cycles it will keep putting out FF until it uh, gets to it I'll show you the, the logic for that in a moment um, the fact that we've got lots of gaps that are of length sort of A0 or 9F or A1, um, that's going to be uh, around one of these peaks. Uh, and there should be fewer that are 50% longer and a very few that are twice as long. So now the trick of course is that A0 times 1.5 um, is going to be very close to FF. Um, and it still makes me highly suspicious that these are all lined up in the uh, the 16 things. Oops, I thought I saw one. Yes, there's an FF in there. Um, what is possible is that the if the strobe line is active for 16 cycles, yeah, see there's a, an FO, there's some there. Um, so they're going to be longer. So we have got some of different lengths in there. And again, so track zero is mostly empty. So um, with MFM encoding, um, that means that basically almost all the peaks are actually the same length. Um, and it's only going to be the sector headers that are going to vary in length. Um, so let's just have a look. At how we plumb this through. So there's our floppy gap strobe. And that comes out of the MFM decoder, which makes sense. Except it's not called that in there, it's called MFM last gap strobe. And that gets set to this gap valid signal. And that comes out of the MFM gap thing. So if last R data is zero and last last R data is one, so this is, yeah, that's running at the full clock speed. So what I'm trying to make sure is that the gap valid signal shouldn't be hanging around for more than a single clock tick. Um, 
So why we're seeing that funny behavior of the gap valid line um, staying high for long periods of time, I'm not yet sure. Um, do we have that exposed in a register anywhere else? Because what I would like to do uh, is to expose that. Yeah, so this is what I think is causing the FFs. So if the gap is too long, it gets marked as FF. Um, so well, let's try a little experiment. Uh, Right, um, oh, and Tagus is saying that uh, white chars on black text are much nicer for night sessions and vice versa. Yeah, um, if someone can quickly find for me how to switch uh, X Emacs into night mode, um, I will quite happily do that. But I don't know offhand how to do it. Um, Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to format track zero HD. Right, so now it's been formatted HD. Um, let's read that track of data again. So now the gap should be shorter on average. Uh, so let's see if that changes. Yeah, so again, so the, the position has moved. So the time at which the things come through is different. Um, but the, you know, that's really weird. Because um, we've just increased Uh, unless, so now it's possible that, because when I format the things in floppy test, uh, I think it actually only formats one side of the disk. Uh, format single. I'm pretty sure I'm only formatting one side. Yes. Um, and I'll bet that um, when I'm doing the track read, uh, it's not picking it up. Oh, toggle night color theme. Yeah, because it's Emacs, of course, there's just a, a option for it. Oh, I need a package. Lydon, you need to tell me what the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the package is that I need to uh, install into XEMAX to get that. Um, ah, here we go. Yep, because I'm not actually using that routine. I'm just doing it directly. Um, and I have an option here to uh, do both sides pretty sure that that's the yes okay that should work uh, oh, alt X customize themes ha oh, ha ha okay available color themes Face colors using deep blue. We don't want deep blue. We want like that. That looks like yeah. It's still a bit blue, isn't it? Uh, 
Uh, let's try that one and see uh, how it looks for... Um, yeah, that's okay. I can live with that. Yeah, Light 23 says, Hunt the Wombat. Yeah, the, the toggle is a custom function. If you want to chuck me the uh, the custom function, I can uh, throw that in. That will be fine. Um, okay, so we should be thusly able to Oh, you know what? I probably I doubt I was actually on track one. No, track zero rather. Oh, you yeah, know I was. Um. I don't know why they decided to seek tracks while I was. weird um right so that should have both sides of the disc formatted um curious as to why it's only seeing three sectors is whether there's a, a monist a um metastability there or not something fruity going on there right so that's RLL Oops. back to MFM right okay that's better okay not quite sure what strange thing had happened there um, so now we should be able to read that track zero Save the track zero. Oh, okay, it's in the wiki. Right, let me just open that tab for later. Okay, so we're seeing values. We're still just getting one in 16 of them, which is really, really annoying. Uh, because that of course means we can only get uh, 4,096 gaps rather than the, um, uh, the 64K. It's writing FF though. So I think it's probably getting a gap value um, and 4k of gaps is going to get us how many sectors it might be just enough to get us uh, a few sectors uh, but it would still be pardon me great to really get to the bottom of uh, of what's going on with this. Um, so what we might do is we've got floppy gap strobe um, sharp Um, if floppy gap strobe is equal to one and last floppy gap strobe is equal to zero. So basically we're going to do an edge detection on this so we have a sharp signal that's only one cycle wide.
try that and see if that helps. Um, but I'm still dubious. The fact that we're seeing the FFs, right, makes me a little bit... Um, Dubious. So I'm going to make two versions oops of it. Uh, and I'll make one version actually uh, uh, ignore the FF caps. Uh, Reg D magic floppy ignore FF is equal to one and pause for floppy wait. Basically, that should be the right logic. Signal reg D magic floppy mode. Signal reg D magic floppy Okay. So that should give us two ways in which we should be able to get a full sixty four K of gaps. Uh, it's 442 so git commit dash a um, where are we um, try to fix work around dollar ffs in floppy dma read bug now the interesting thing actually of having implemented this uh, DMA mode, this now basically gives us the same as what Paula did for the floppy controller on the Amiga. Uh, in that we can request uh, the flux from an entire track uh, in one go so that you can post process it and decode it as MFM or RLL or whatever you jolly well feel like. Um, so this is actually it's not a, a bad addition uh, to have. Um, and we could, in fact, even eventually make the um, uh, the reverse function, right? That you can do a DMA write to the um, uh, to the floppy uh, in this way just by providing uh, the set of gaps. Uh, Targa says, uh, can you count the number of FFs generated? Maybe it's even more exceeding the length uh, display. I just speculate no clue, would it make any sense? So I think the fact that we're seeing 16 of them, it, it makes me think that the um, the strobe from the floppy decoder is not being one clock tick wide, um, or there's some other stupid thing going on. Um, and we're gonna find out which that is when this bitstream generates. Um, so what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to go and get my deck of floppy drives from the shed. Uh, it'll only take me a moment or two, hopefully. Um, and we will try um, uh, this stuff with other floppy drives. Now, but first up, we've got a syntax error in the VHDL. Um, syntax error near then 5708. Um, okay, what have I... Oh, yeah, because I've left a bracket off, right? Okay. 
I hadn't pushed it anywhere so I can just amend the commit. Right, so we want to um, back in three minutes, grabbing more floppy drives to test from the jet. Just in case anyone tunes in uh, while I'm hopping out there. So back in a couple of minutes. Okay, let's. In the meantime, we've got another syntax error in the VHDL. Error, failed synthesizing. Yep, okay. Uh, where is it? Overlapping choice in case. Oh, okay, right, I've got two options. Oh, did I not change the F to an E or something? I didn't change the F to an E. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> when I stepped away, Herdware says, this is a time in normal chat, Twitch streams where chat is spamming with emotes. Uh, so we've happily had two come in there. Okay, so I have indeed been out to the shed uh, and I have some floppy drives. Um, so we have a, a nice Sony drive. Uh, What's this one? Uh, that's a, a Panasonic. Is that another Panasonic? Yep, that's another Panasonic. Um, very slightly different model to the previous one. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how these all vary to each other. Um, Saffronic? Who's heard of Saffronic? floppy drives before um when even here we go on the back it's probably easy for it to oh that's funny this this camera is set to have a narrow focal length um saffronic floppy drive mm -hmm. uh a mitsumi and so thanks to everyone who donated floppy drives by the way um uh, 
way back when we were asking for them because that's exactly how I've got this pile. Um, yet another Panasonic. This one is kind of coming apart a little bit. It'd be interesting to see how that one works. Um, another Panasonic of a different model. Quite a different model, actually, that one. Um, here's a Samsung one. Um, here's a, I have no idea what it is, one in a five and a quarter inch carrier. Um, might be older actually, given that it's in a five and a quarter inch carrier, that would be interesting to um, test. Sorry for bumping the mic there. Um, two different revisions of Sony floppy drive. Um, yet another Panasonic. And yeah, a completely different Sony. So we've got, what's that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 floppy drives that we can uh, cause havoc with, um, which would be pretty good to uh, uh, to verify. So if we go, zip. Now it's time for open Mega 65 surgery, right? Uh, if I pop the keyboard off the back there, um, I can pull the power from the floppy. Uh, now this is going to be fun because you can probably see I have my floppy cable needed, uh, routed so neatly under the floppy drive to come out around there. Um, so by the magic of television, um, here's one I prepared earlier. I have a spare 34 pin connector. Um, so let's Turn the power off to the Mega 65. The JTAG still got power, but that's not going to flow back through to here. Um, so we can disconnect that one. We can connect that one. We've already got the power out from there. We can take the first drive from our pile. Um, connect that. Uh, now, I can't remember, I think we're using, we'll soon find out, I think we're using untwisted cable on the Mega 65. So the Mega 65 actually supports two floppy drives on the cable, by the way. Um, so you'll be able to use one of the breakout holes if you wanted to, to, um, to route cables out for a second drive. Um, and we might even support that Yes, yeah, my hidden cache of SD cards. Exactly. Um, inside the case. I find it a convenient place to hide them. Um, okay, so that's floppy drive number one. Um, we'll put our standard. Hmm. Oh, this drive just feels a little bit funny putting the disk all the way in. Right. So we have that there, we'll turn it on. No smoke comes out of the machine, this is good. Um, and then what I need to do, so I won't keep flicking back and forth between the screen. Um, need to make sure that we have the latest bit stream loaded. to run our floppy test program. Uh, we'll go histogram. And it would help if I was actually showing you the screen, wouldn't it? Ah, now the floppy light is staying on. So that think means it's either on the wrong connector I thought we decided to use the the non-twisted one yeah that light's still on
drive is at least spinning though. Have that one, try it with this other one again. Yes, it spins with both. Right, let's just assume for the moment that maybe that drive is cactus, because again, these drives are all untested, right? Um, try a Panasonic drive. with the twist sorry without the twist rather let's try it with the twist okay that's got the light on yay right of course it's on a completely unknown track right okay so we're going to assume that this other drive is faulty, or actually, let me double check. This might actually be a double density drive. Uh, the other one. So it was a uh, Sony MP F17 Wobble U. Uh, no, apparently it's a it is a, a high density drive. Let's just we'll assume it's either faulty or some drives actually do have the cable requirement with the notch backwards to expectation but allegedly not on that so we'll just assume that that particular drive is just dead that's right we've got 12 others so let's run track zero uh, it's high density start for, so we can change the formatting so we don't currently have the right pre-comp enabled which we'll need to do you can see here without the right pre-comp things start going to, uh, to pot not looking too bad and then let's move that central peak across okay that's looking all right let's increase the data rate and we again as we expect this starts really going to pop quite a lot well, it's not doing too bad being cleaned up with the um, the really aggressive um, right pre-comp settings we're doing there yeah and then it's completely to pop after that uh, but so that, that's broadly what we were getting with the um, uh, the internal drive. If we now switch to our little encoding, um, so I think we decided that 59 FC was kind of the magic value, and again we see that nice effect where the um, uh, as we bring back the like shorten the uh, the gaps so that the longest gap is not longer than the driver is expecting I think is probably what's actually going on here so that's down to one six which is what basically what we had on the um, uh, the Alps drive right uh, so that's looking uh, pretty decent to me so 
I think we can say with that drive, that Sony drive, we, we're quite happy with the performance. It's not noticeably different to the uh, uh, to the Alps. So we'll go to the next floppy drive. So that's a success from that one. Uh, the next one up is another Sony drive. Um, so you can... See what we're up to there. Right, we've got an LED. And that one's also looking pretty much the same, which would be a little bit surprised if um, two very similar Sony drives behave differently. Um, that said, the models are, uh, on these two drives are quite different. Um, so the one that's plugged in now, so that's an um, April 2005 uh, MPF 920. Oh, so, you know, so this is a Sony. The previous one that we just tested was a Panasonic. Sorry for the confusion there. Right, so we've had a Sony and a Panasonic tested, both okay. Come on. I forgot about how grippy some of these um, floppy connectors are. Right, so now we have another Sony that is MPF 920-1. So it's the same family as the other one. Interestingly, it's older. It's 98 instead of 2005. Um, I don't have not the foggiest idea what the difference in the, um, the drives actually is. Um, retrieve my disk that I forgot to get back out. And this is one is it twist or no twist on the cable. I forgot what we were doing. It could be that this drive also just doesn't work. Um, it would help if I actually showed you the uh, <laughs> what we're trying to do here, right? Okay, so I think we got it. so that's another drive that just doesn't work for us. But importantly, it's not that it's not supporting the data rate. Um, it's actually just that the drive uh, isn't um, reading any data because we would see that the histogram would do something, um, even if it's just showing complete mess. Okay, so next drive is the, I have no idea what brand it is. Not even sure what machine it was out of. Um, retrieve my disk. Okay, this one is doing something. And again, it, these won't be on track zero in all probability when we um, plug them in. So we have to. Reseek. It's possible that this, again, because it's in a five and a quarter inch caddy, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a, um, uh, a 720K drive. Because um, I can't think, like no relatively recent machine ought to have had uh, a drive that slow in. So let's just go up to, DD speed. Well, maybe it's the wrong cable. We'll just check just in case. Nope, so that was, okay, so it's definitely it's the, the twist cable is the one that we want. Mm. 
Okay, I think we're going to say that that drive is also stuffed. Or otherwise mysteriously suspected not to work. And again, that was trying to format just a DD. Not anything higher. Um, and Herdware says no TX drives. Um, yeah, it would seem that I don't have any TX drives. Here, I do have another little stash in the cupboard, which we'll pull out. Um, oh, this is a bit interesting. I'm not sure whether you can see, there's a jumper that has been put on two of the pins in here. Um, I cannot think of any sensible purpose why you would put a jumper across two pins on a floppy drive like that because you wouldn't be able to put a cable in on it um, okay Seek it back down to track zero. Um, I'm just going to turn off the right pre compensation here. Um, just while we're doing these low data rates, because the right precompensation actually spreads the peaks uh, because no compensation is actually required at low data rates. Bit of latency on this, which is a bit annoying. I'm trying to do it. Okay. So that's at DD rate, and we should be able to wind that back, and I'm not sure which track we're on. Let's wind it all the way back to, so I've just temporarily stopped it from formatting the track, just so that I can jump this down faster. Because otherwise you have to wait while it formats the track in between. Okay. Um, so this Samsung drive I think actually is pretty crap. Uh, let's turn on some right pre-compensation. Slowly bring the speed up. Yeah, see this is quite a lot worse than any of the other drives that we've seen so far. Um, let's go to RLL. jump up to 50 again. Da, 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 da. Okay, now we'll start formatting it again. So 
So, yeah, well, it's still pretty miserable this drive. Yeah, okay, so the, the Samsung drive is by far the crappiest so far, right? Um, well and away the crappiest. Um, so it's the only one that can't read these maximum density discs. Let's just we're gonna wind, put it back in for a minute. I'm gonna wind back the RLL data rate and we'll actually see what the minimum data rate that looks writable uh, and retrievable on this drive is. So that's still too close. That's still too close in my view. That's still too close. Um, so Tiger Media, so far the Alps and Panasonics are the uh, good ones. Um, yeah, look, so 1E or 1D is probably okay. Oh, this is interesting. So we're writing it again and it's now behaving differently than before. Right, so that's too much write pre-comp. I'm actually just having a funny theory. I wonder if this Samsung drive is actually not too clever pants for itself. Um, it's possible that it's actually got <laughs> hardware right pre-compensation because look as i'm winding off all the right pre-comp look how sharp this is getting so i'm going to turn off all of it good thing i checked that look at how sharp those peaks are uh Hoda is saying has there been any work supporting hd drives and basic or kernel um not yet we've been thinking about it um Okay, so we can get down to 18. This is the um, the Samsung. So the Samsung drive has got hardware right pre-compensation in it, um, is my strong suspicion. And it's only down at this speed that we're now starting to see a need to bring in a little bit, because of course they're not expecting that we're doing these kind of completely outrageous data rates, right? So that's what we're able to get out of other drives. Let's just, I'm gonna adjust those two right pre-comps separately. So yeah, so we definitely have split peaks. So what we're gonna do is try and pull the one of those in first. Well, she's pulling in one class of them each at a time, right? We definitely need, again, we can see those first two peaks are, are verging toward each other. So we'll try and Shift that across. Yeah. Interesting. Um, that it might, there might be some interesting combination that actually lets us get faster if their right pre-comp algorithm is better than ours. 
So you get these funny effects right where we're changing it by like odd and even values are radically different. Okay, so I'm still gonna say the Samsung drive is not recommended because it does the hardware right pre-comp um, that we'd have to, like software would have to behave a little bit differently with it. Um, it would be fine for reading, but for writing um, it's gonna require different handling and it doesn't get us any better performance overall, um, which is actually kind of encouraging because it actually says that we've probably got as good a write pre-comp as, um, you know, there's not much more to be got out of better write pre -comp, at least not without going to a much more sophisticated uh, scheme. I think with more sophisticated schemes, there is still more to be wrung out, but we, it's um, beyond what we have, uh, you know, reasonable time to put in. So here's another Panasonic drive. Let's try this one. And this one's got the jumper sitting in it as well. I'm not quite sure why someone's gonna put jumpers in some of these drives. Whether that someone was me or someone else. Okay, so we've got another floppy drive there. Uh, seek back down to track zero. Come on. Oops. interesting um, let me just you know turn off all the, the right pre-comp so we're reading something from the disk but it looks like rubbish. But whether the disk is in or not does make a difference, right? So I think I'm gonna say that that drive is um, suspect as well. Okay. okay, there's the, now we've got the, the coupe Panasonic. got a jumper in it as well. So I wonder if these ones with jumpers are ones that whoever gave them to me suspected were faulty. Well, they've come from someone's faulty floppy drive pile or something that could be an explanation. Okay, so this one's looking good so far. Uh, let's wind the data rate back up again. And this one also shows signs of having hardware right pre-comp. Because again, you look at how narrow those peaks were.
We're only needing a little bit of right pre-comp to um, correct it. I'm liking this drive. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, so there's data rate 1.4, uh, which we've never had looking that clean on any other drive. Um, and we're using only really slight right pre-comp. Um, if I turn off the right pre-comp, you'll see it's still... Well, the, the signals are still quite clear and strong. They're just, you know, we're starting to get this forking of the, uh, uh, the signals uh, in timeout a little bit. Um, yeah, <laughs> what's the data rate one for? One three still looks to be quite usable. Um, especially, I suspect now if we. Yes, oops, that's the wrong way for the right pre-comp. <laughs> okay. Good thing we tried the uh, the coupe drive, the one that looked the most rubbish. Yeah, I think data rate one two might be a little bit too far for it. Yeah, Keith is saying, "Is this really an ED drive?" Um, I don't believe so. Let's let's look up what it actually is. So it's a Panasonic JU dash two five seven. Oops, if I can type two five seven A six zero six P F floppy drive. Uh, data sheet. Uh, nope, can't find any data sheet on it, but it is not an ED drive. All the ED drives actually say ED. Uh, on them. Um, so this is ridiculous, right? Um, so this is with sector gaps. So we've got 32, 42, there's 46 sectors on this track. Uh, and if I turn off gaps, we should have over 50 sectors on this track. When it gets its way around. Now, if only you could read that with any other drive. Now, so this is the funny thing. It may actually be because it's, what matters is the drive you write in needs to do all the corrections to get the timing of the pulses good. Uh, and it needs to have a stable motor controller. That's the other kind of ingredient in there. Um, so now why don't we have any more sectors on there? So I pressed G to toggle that. So that's... 32, 42, 46, yeah. Try toggling gaps again. it should be getting 50 or 51 sectors per track 
uh, in there. A kid can saying, is there a limit in your code because you never assume you'd be able to get this many sectors? No, so it'll actually, it was happily go certainly up to sector 63, in fact, actually up to sector 127. Um, and the VHDL has no limit in it either that I uh, recall, because actually it's harder to add a limit in, in a sense, because um, it just counts. Um, but what, it, well, no, no, that's a bit weird. Um, unless my gap option is doing weird things. So Tiger's been saying, now try reading the dump with this story. Yeah, so once I get that bitstream patched, um, that's going to be really interesting. But I'm actually going to try and read this disk now that I've formatted it in this drive in another one. Because um, I think that's actually going to be really interesting to um, uh, to see. Now there was something I was. What was it that I was just going to try and do? Oh, that's right. I was going to check my um, code reformat. Yeah. See, this is what it is. Um, when I re-enabled formatting the other side of the disk, I didn't enable it with um, with gaps on the other side. Right. So now we're in. Come on. Okay, we need to. Tweak the <laughs> good grief. Look at how clean this blasted drive is. This is ridiculous. It really is. If I don't mind that one peak being shifted in time, Gith <laughs> <laughs> yeah. says, if you can write disks with this type of drive that can't be duped with any other drive type but can be read, that would be awesome copy protection. It, w it would, wouldn't it? Um, you'd have to basically you'd have to crack the the game, right, to uh, to remove the protection. Um, because you wouldn't be able to put it on any other, you wouldn't be able to copy the disks per se. Um, so data rate 12, let's try. Oops. Yeah, see now that <laughs> now our rate limiting problem is actually that the at this low divisor of so dollar twelve, so it's a divisor of eighteen, so it's over two megahertz. The write precompensation we require um, is effectively half or more of the um, uh, the time pulse. Uh, so we can't correct for it anymore, even though the drive electronics might be accurate. Because um, that is just beautifully resolved. Um, so let's try then. 
And now we've, we've got this metastability problem, right, in that we're repeatedly reading the same batches of sectors on there. Um, so you have to wait a little while for it to um, uh, to catch up. So we'll we'll see how many sectors we get on there at uh, at rate one three. I'm going to write this one pencil here. So this is with the um, Panasonic two five seven A six o six P, and it's our coupe model with the flip top. Um, so that gets us, we can already see that there are at least 45 sectors, so no gaps, because we can see that the, we've got 15 on the bottom row, so it's at least 45. probably 45 it's a bit of potluck when you format the exact timing like if one sector almost but not quite fits on uh, when it's late um, so let's turn gaps on <laughs> yes look at that beautiful four and the six on that bottom row so that's uh, 32 plus 17 Yes, 32 plus 17. So that's at least 49 sectors on the track, uh, possibly even slightly more. But it might just be 49. We'll have to settle for just 49 sectors per track. Right? So that's 49 kilobytes per track on those low numbered tracks compared to 80 tracks for 1.44 meg right so if we do and of course we, we can't do this across all 80 tracks right uh, but this would mean that we would do 3.92 floppy megabytes um, on an 80 track disk if we could have this density so in, in reality maybe it'll do like three and a half meg or something um, we can step forward through some tracks and see how it looks I expect it will degrade sooner you already see it's kind of spreading so I'm just stepping forward a track each time and formatting here um, it'll kind of be lying saying it's track 80 when it uh, track zero rather when it's not really so when it has the um, where well, you've got that last sector underhead and it's got um, so it's got track dollar 80 the bit seven so making it 80 in hex is actually just saying that it matches the, the asked for track because it just thinks it's asking for track zero um, which of course is not really and the same with the head um, so head eight zero means head zero and it was asking for head zero um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's working across some reasonable thing. So let's try that disk back in our original ALPS drive and see if it can be read. Uh, so I need to. Oh, no. Oh. It's easier to move the connector on the Mega 65 end. Oops. That can stay there. That needs to come off from here. Okay. Right, so um, as you saw, we've, we're now back to our original internal drive. And we need to seek. Oh, blast, and I've left it on format, haven't I? So it's just reformatted the. 
sector. So <laughs> inputs, right? So this is what the Alps drive does at the same rate. So let's just quickly undo my stupid. I need like a, a floppy cable KVM. <laughs> um, somehow, I don't think that anyone's actually bothered to make such a, a, a horror. Right. Oh, maybe it actually is the reed circuitry that's better. I oh, know, because we need to seek back to track zero, right? Um. So are we formatting or not formatting? Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go and format a few different tracks at progressively slower rates. Right, so now we can compare those different rates on the two different drives. little coupe drive. Which is interesting, someone has lovingly taken that lid off. They've removed the screws. Track zero data rate 13, we, we can't read that on this drive. Um, 14, we also can't read it on this drive. This is back on the, the outs, right? 15, we also can't really read it. Uh, I didn't. I thought we formatted the 16 as well. That's right. Okay, interestingly, so the, that Panasonic drive has got better read circuitry in it. Um, maybe that its filter um, is better tuned to those higher frequencies. Most, most fascinating. Okay, so that's the, the Panasonic so far is the happy drive. So now that's back to the um, amazing Panasonic drive. Why is that not? All right, we need to go back. Because it was trying to read it wrong data rate. Right? Um, just because I'm curious, so 40.5 divided by, so 13, that's 19 in hex. So this is 2.13 megahertz instead of uh, the one megahertz that it's supposed to be able to do uh, data at. So that that's really, really nice. Um, okay, next drive. Okay, here we have a Mitsumi. 
D359M3. Okay, right, and this one's got a jumper across it as well. Fascinating. Take these off. Might have the cable upside down on this yet. So this is showing more expected behavior. I'd say it's, it's worse than the bulk of the rest of them. And that it's, yeah, it's quite a bit worse. Um, again, now that we've uh, we've clued up to this phenomena that drives might be doing their own crazy things, we will just try dialing down what we're doing for the corrections. It's a bit weird that we kind of sometimes reading some rubbish. Um, like the, the first two peaks are, are joining together. But yeah, so it, it's clear that it's the um, Mitsumi is not up to the, um, uh, the standard of some of the others. So the Alps is better than the Mitsumi. It's only that Panasonic drive so far that's um, knocked everything out of the park. Let's have a look at the singular Saffronic drive. Let's see whether Saffronic make good drives or not. Again, this one's got a jumper across the thing. Which I have no real idea what was meant by that. Ooh. But it has an orange lead. Um, uh, I don't know which way up the cable needs to go. That one, I think, we can, well, unless it is selected on the wrong drive number. Oh, the cable is really, really tight. because It's got some bent pins on it. Now it's not going to let my cable go without damage. There's a little, little screwdriver. to encourage it free with
okay. That's annoying. It's gone. Broken the uh, the clippy do for, or rather, I have tried to pull it out of that drive. Um, right, another drive in the not interesting pile. Oh, we've got another of our nice Panasonic uh, drives. Oh, this one's also been coupéd, but they haven't put the screws back in. Let's see if this one is as good as the other one, or whether the other one is a bit like uh, you know, Herbie, a bit of a, a freak. Again, it's got a jumper across two of the pins. I wonder whether someone was doing something funny like uh, using them as a um, uh, one of those floppy drive music making setups. Okay, so I think we decided we needed a little bit of right pre-comp, but not too much. Uh, track zero will help us. Come on, back to track zero. Ooh. Things is confused. formatting for a moment just so I can step the numbers faster we'll just stop at the uh, so that's normal double density setting uh, with the MFM let's now switch to RLL Beautiful. This is still all without right pre-comp. Um, curiously, it's not reading the um, the TIB back. That's a bit weird. Um, well, now it is. Hmm. I think the right head might take a little bit longer to kick in on uh, this particular one because it's not always um, writing the um, the TIB. This one's not doing as well as the other Panasonic. Like, 
I mean, okay, it, we're at data rate 13, right? So we, we're not expecting necessarily wonders. But yeah, no, it's just this one is clearly inferior to the um, uh, its stable mate uh, over there. Oh, well. Actually, let me just make sure that it's... If we go to 17, I think, is kind of what we were saying that we were aiming for normally. Okay, so that's looking good. Yes, yeah, so it goes down to about one six. So it's, it's on a par with the um, uh, the outs. Okay, and we have yet another of the same, uh, nearly the same model. So this one is a uh, 257A605P. Uh, Keith Kinnan is saying um, INB4 run on Panasonic floppy drives. Uh, what's INB4? Well, this one's also had its... Um, which of these Panasonic drives have all had the, uh, the lids unscrewed? Hmm. And it's got a jumper across it as well. Which actually makes me wonder, the one that we think is a 606 um, might not be. Um, I might have to have a look and try and find other markings on the uh, the things. It could be, for example, that it's got the lid from the 605, right? going on here this one might also be faulty in that it doesn't seem so I can hear it step but it doesn't seem to be writing so that might be why that one had a, a jumper on it. <coughs> and put that in the dead pile. Uh, so we're actually down to the last one until I go to my other floppy stash. This is a Sony. Um, let's see what the Sony can do. Okay, again, it's a new type, so I'm going to turn off all of the right pre-comp. That's really interesting. So I think this drive has a... Um, so it's got some read right right frequency. This is actually quite encouraging as well, right? That this is behaving. This is at data rate one seven. We come back to one six. Yes, it's all it's mostly okay. I'm just going to try and turn up the second coefficient without the first one because it was giving these really beautifully sharp peaks, right? Uh, but now we probably do need the. Yeah, see that's starting to pull them apart again. So 
the problem that we can't tell the uh, the two shortest peak widths apart, which is a real shame because otherwise it was doing a great job. Let's go to kind of our nominal expected settings that we've been using for okay so it's it's good at data rate one six that's not a problem one five yeah that's actually looking pretty good i reckon that's at least as good as the outs is maybe even a fraction better one four can we tidy it up It won't do one four, it'll do one five. So it, the, the Sony drive is quite good, but not perfect. Um, so it's, it's less good than our uh, amazing Panasonic Coupe drive. And um, I'm just gonna have a look in my cupboard here because I reckon I have the ED drive up here. I'm curious to see how that performs. And you see, I have to temporarily pull down the green screen to get into the cupboard here. And possibly move a pile of junk. Two more out drives. There's the ED drive. Okay. So let's check these other two Alps drives. Oh, and I just realized we've had the music off the whole time, haven't we? So I shut that laptop to oh, get something else out. Um, let me know if the audio level is too high on it. So we're expecting that these Alps drives will all be very similar in their behavior. I'm quite surprised if they're not. Okay, so that's data rate one five. Um, so it's about what we would expect. So yep, so that one is good. So we're not seeing great variation out of two outs drives. Put the third one in. Um, so if you like to say in science, you need to have three samples before you can draw error bars uh, to have a, a confidence interval. So that's that one. Put a 
way with the disc in it, of course. The other one. So that one's possibly a marginally worse than the other one, but not greatly so. So I think we can be kind of happy that, again, we're actually going to use data rate one seven, not one five. Um, so yeah, I think we can say that the what we're doing will work on all the out drives. Um, and of course it will work on a, a bunch of these other uh, drives as well without any trouble. The only thing will be whether we have to fiddle the right pre-comp settings based on the different drives. So let's see what the fabled ED drive can actually do. Um, I'm quite curious. It's a Sony. So we know that a Sony was actually the second best drive we had anyway. Um, but I would expect that we'll have possibly more reliable drive motor speed control. Any love. So it wants to spin. But this is with no twist, so let's put the twist back on. Because that's likely to be needed. Right, so it's spinning the whole time, even though we're, we're at, um, I've reset back to basic prompt, right? So the drive shouldn't be spinning. Um, key only, not the cable only fits in one way. So it's not. Here now. Chomp that back on. So the question is where's our model number? So it's an MPF40W. MPF40W data sheet. is a, it's a dash 23 whatever that means but that's fine we'll just let me get this over onto oops so we can all see it Oh, it's got a drive select on the side. Right, that's all. I'll show you. Whoops. It's got a little slidey switchy.
that. Good thing we did check the data sheet. We'll see whether this actually helps us any or not, though. So there should be one position where that drive lead goes off. If we have that right. Test program back up. No, the um, that setting doesn't make any difference. The drive still just spins if there's a disc in there. So let's see what else there is to see. That's the data sheet. That's not really a data sheet, is it? Um, this is one of these annoying. This is one thing that, and well. Very few things that annoy me about the Atom Mini Pro, but one of them is that it, on this monitor that I'm using for the, the fold back, um, it crops it on my monitor, but it, for you guys, it actually shows the full resolution. So I can't use the edges around the screen. Like where that window is now fills my entire fold back display. Um, so what was it? It was a MP-F40W data sheet. So that's the useless thing that we looked at. Let's have a look. At some of these other things and see if there's a... There are dash 14, dash 15 are two new drives from Sony that handle yep, the 4 meg. The 14 has density select 1 and density select two, uh, 0 on pins 2 and 33 respectively, whereas the dash 15 has density select 1 and 2 on pins 2 and 6 respectively. Right, that's interesting to know. Um, because we've wired things up to support the 15, I believe, in terms of having, we actually do have a density select line uh, on the Mega 65 floppy cable. Yep, so that's showing us again our beautiful thing, but it's not really giving us any new information. The ident and MFM pin level. Did someone else previously do non-MFM encoding on a floppy? Not that I can see. Um, that's interesting. sheets available so Sony ED 4 megabyte floppy drive data sheet no. 
Can't find anything really certain. That's okay. Because um, what we have basically confirmed, despite not being able to make the ED drive work. Um, oh, hang on, that's interesting. Ha ha ha. The data sheet wouldn't tell us anything useful. Um, but this does. The connector here. I'm not sure if you can uh, read the fine print. 34 and 33. Pins 1 and 2 at that end. Now red is at this end. So this cable, uh, the, so it's notched backwards compared to the normal drives. So let's try to not break my cable. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, so let's try to see if I can get this to squish in backwards somehow. So the trouble is it's got the, uh, uh, the notch on there. I have given notch ectomies to floppy cables before. Um, this is probably not the best way to do it, but feel See how we go. Because the Mega 65 end of the cable also can't be flipped around easily, um, which is a bit annoying. Otherwise, I would try to get at that end. So, a, a pure naked 34 pin cable would actually be the um, a good solution for this right now if I had one um, it's been quite resistant but I'm not going to be able to notch it out on the um, see it's right by the PCB so I'm not sure whether you can quite see the so this side is where the notch is out you can kind of see the, the difference in see the speculation on the edge of it and so on this side it's flush against the PCB it's going to be a pig I have to do it there um, oh, the, the Mega 65's floppy cable doesn't have a notch on it um, the trick is to get other end of it out and where I can plug the ED drive on. I can get enough slack there for that. Okay, so pin one stays around the right way. Uh, on there. And then we need pin one needs to be not there but there okay this is looking and now it doesn't spin now it should be spinning we can try yes in the central position yeah, come on. It spins. It spins. We have. Ha 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 ha. Right. We have the extended density drive in. Seek to track zero. Oops, we need to 
set our data rate low, enable formatting. Okay, so that's on RLL encoding now. We're currently without uh, write pre-comp, so we'll add some write pre-comp. interesting is seeing the split peaks very clearly defined so I think there is something that's more accurate about these drives and now we've got the split peak again trying to do is on that first peak to find the setting that best brings the um, the two peaks together so I think this second one needs to be higher something like that but it's still it's looking a bit scrappy right So for DD, hey Marauder, welcome along. Uh, you're just at the bit where we've actually got the, the ED drive uh, plugged in um, to see how that performs. And um, quite fascinatingly, it's, um, it's no better than the Alps. In fact, I think it's actually marginally worse than the Alps. Um, so we've actually chosen with the Alps, short of having a, a whole pile of the, um, uh, the Sony or Panasonic drives, we've actually got the, the best drive. Um, but it, it still just amazes me that the um, uh, that p one particular Panasonic drive is just way, 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 way better uh, than all the rest. So again, I'm just going to actually plug the um, the amazing Panasonic drive back in now that we've had our fun with the um, the ED drive. Mm. Just for comparison, right? me lean out of camera rather than actually seeing what I'm doing here. Now you can see my arm for the most part, right? Um, why is that not mating? Ah. 
Somewhere I've got a bent pin on our lovely Sonic. Wonderful flip top coupe Panasonic. doing uh, and so now let's wind that data rate back up just because it's such a joy to see this absurdly good drive um, we don't I'm just going to Turn off the pulse. <laughs> Look how skinny the blasted things are. Um, yeah, so at 12, it's not resolving, but we might have to. But it's funny that there's something going on with its filter here, I reckon, um, more than the drive not actually being able to work at this data rate. Um, because it's still we're still getting neatly resolved peaks in the grand scheme of things, um, but if we go back to there, and which was the optimum there? It was yeah, four and eight. It's just like. Um, Keith Kanan is saying, what can it do on track um, 80 something and what's the maximum track it can handle? Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Um, so, what I might do to test that is we will format the disk as high density. So, this will go all the way up to, to 80 or 84. Uh, so we can at least see what the track numbers are again when we're looking at the um, the histogram stuff and then we can uh yeah see what it would do on those uh the the shorter inner tracks <laughs> yeah and broader we're saying that panasonic are more likely the parent company Matsushita always uses really high quality components. Yeah, I, I, I'm inclined to agree that it's just uh, really nice. It has been interesting to see is that some of the drives have clearly got some kind of write compensation or post read compensation uh, built into them as well. It's been quite fascinating to, uh, uh, to see. Ah, oh, okay, we've only gone to track 80, but that's all right. Uh, so that's on track 79. 
I mean, we're still formatting, aren't we? Yeah, we are formatting there. So now we're not formatting. Something funny with the stepping going on here. We'll go back to track zero. That's supposed to be track one, two, three, four, five. Yes, so we have to just had to match the um, uh, the data rate and the encoding so that we start seeing sectors again. Right, so that's track 81, I'm pretty sure, because it's got the um, the identifier sector on it. Rather, the things that I've formatted previously. Different. Is it? No. Oh, what's going on? I'm going to just reformat the disk. HD. I was even listening to the head stepper. So that's got on there. Well, I think it, it may be able to do the extra tracks. But again, they're quite independent things as to whether they can do extra tracks or not. Um, what I'm actually going to do, um, is format disk. So that at the moment it's only trying to do 80 tracks. Um, so I can easily make it actually format 85 tracks instead.
Okay. Should actually mm, what? that's interesting. This is just trying to read the disc back. Let's take a look at the histogram. So this is the drive that we were doing wonders with before. We told it to format. So let's just try high density MFM. So that's now encoding. Yeah, that's written rubbish to the disk. Do do I? Can write properly to the disk. Grr. Right. Test formatting. Just make sure that I haven't like completely changed something in my um, format routine. to it as it was formatting the last uh, tracks beyond track 80 again it actually sounded like it was doing it fine so why is it writing rubbish might be that the right pre-comp that we're using because this is one thing that we have discovered today is that the right pre-comp settings that are optimal for each drive 
very. This drive, I reckon the peaks are being narrowest. There's not much benefit going beyond there. And then we try and move that peak. sitting so fifteen nine FD. Let's see what. Yes, yeah, so we're doing five eight FB. How does that look on there? Uh, what was it? It was five. Eight FB. Five eight FB. So yeah, for thirteen that looks pretty bad, but for fourteen it's totally fine. For fifteen it's fine. Sixteen is fine. Seventeen. So it should jolly well be writing perfectly good data. The way that we do that. So if I run that for a few tracks, right. So the first four tracks we've now reformatted. this histogram view when I come back into it if it's set to format the variable gets remembered between calls um, so we will format now that I've made sure I've turned it off format a few tracks have a look and we're seeing custard There's something in the way, the difference between how I'm formatting it in here and how I'm doing it. Um, in this reformat bit down here. So we're putting our pre-comp values in, that's all fine. That's what we're doing over here as well. We're writing the track that we want it to be recorded as, that's all fine. That all gets recorded fine. We're not setting the sector count in the TIB but that 
shouldn't make any difference and then we're doing it again for the other side of the disc only difference I can see is that on the one that's not working we're actually we're waiting more before we do anything um, that makes no sense to me at all so unless the track to track settle time on this drive is slower that could explain it I'm not totally convinced that it's uh, an explanation um, it's just really weird so if I format it DD instead again we'll stop it after just a few tracks whoops Right, so that's DD formatted, so we can see that that's there and that's all fine. So the DD formatting is working. Oh, okay, hang on, let me, so um, JJ Danios has pointed out a possible problem. Uh, yes! That would cause a major problems because that would be making the um, well spotted. If I gave out pointy things, I would be giving you some right now. That will totally be what the problem is because it's putting instead of putting the correct um, third coefficient for the right precomp, it's putting rubbish onto the first one. Uh, so that's actually in the wrong direction. Well spotted, sir. That is almost certainly going to be our problem. So we'll just format a few tracks just to check. Come on. Okay, so now we're back on track zero, so that's all good. Um, curiously, so it thinks it's as you're telling in parallel encoding. So it's not pulling any valid sectors out of that, which is Right, so I've just formatted the track here and now. So we had four. That's what it should be doing. Let me just have another look for any more stupids in here. Right, 
to limit the format of the disk. We want to make sure, yes, yeah, so we disable the auto tracking. We also want to disable So here, we're actually just, okay, and 50, let's make sure that we really are disabling that, yeah, well in actual fact we set it to 0 or to 1, right, so we're just going to set it to 0. Okay. Why are we seeing rubbish on the disk again? in this in the histogram thing from when I had it doing seeking tests and we really don't want it doing that anymore is the problem. For that list is missing 10. Reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Right. I'm sure that will help. Format. Let's do the first few tracks again. There's something whacked out here, right?
What is going wrong here? Because I think if I, I just, I'm confused. Um, I don't want to read all these things. I want to write them all, format it <coughs> DD, and make sure that we can actually see all the tracks. And then we'll do the same thing again back in HD, and then we can, in theory, be sure um, where the problem comes in. Whether it's a track seeking problem or whether it's a um, something else. See, it's still showing last sector under head is 85. That is track 5. Oh, but that will be because... Well, we'll look. Let's try to... That really just means that it hasn't seen any other tracks. So now it's seeing other ones. So it might be that this Wonder Drive actually just has problem signaling. We just kind of stop mucking about with it. Uh, it's really just for curiosity anyway. Um, we've really answered our key thing, which is, um, is the uh, Pi megabytes stuff uh, feasible on the vast majority of floppy drives uh, not just outs but certainly on multiple instances of outs drives um, and then on brands that people in dev kits have probably already got and the answer to that is quite clearly yes um, Pi megabyte disks work um, now just for my sanity I'm going to format a few tracks in the so we're now back to the um, oops uh, blah, blah, the regular internal drive in the, the mega 65 that we know jolly well works but what's going on there it's still doing the same thing to me is it I'm just gonna format the um the disk oh yeah so for always saying i remember making my own disk compression zip like tools that ran on the 1541 cpu in the 80s that's one of the, the joys of the CPU. Of course, the, it's one of those two-edged swords, right? You can do the decompression on the floppy drive to fit more on the disk, but then you're still limited by the transfer rates back to the CPU, uh, to the main computer. But if the computer is busy calculating something else and the transfer rate is less important than how much you cram on the disk, then that makes sense, right? Now, the other possibility is that we've actually in <laughs> trying this disk in all of these drives, including some that are quite clearly not very well functional, is that we've actually scraped some of the media off of the um, uh, the load numbered tracks. Look, no, that doesn't make sense because we can format them if we do it individually. Okay, so that's been formatted we now try and test reading it we're not reading the TIB back Okay, so we've formatted the disk 
double da um, data density, and that's all worked fine. Okay, now let's go and format it high density. Whoops. I'm going to have to give up in a minute anyway, family are uh, up and about in time for me to get on with other things for the day. Uh, Marauder um, is asking, are you using generic HD discs or a name brand? Um, I'm using whatever strange disc I happen to find floating around. Um, <clears throat> I haven't actually got any um, old, uh, new old stock 1.44 meg media. Uh, if people want to uh, post me some fresh media, that probably wouldn't be a bad thing to test with. Otherwise, I'm actually using random old discs that are hanging around the place, uh, including some that people have uh, sent me. Right, so now it's format of the disk if it's having trouble reading it. Um, which again could be if the media's been scraped off, right? A different disc and stuff a bit later on but uh, yeah we'll have to leave it at that for the moment unfortunately um, but that's right we're still progress we've gone through the pilot drives we know these data rates uh, should be fine and yeah and suspect that I've just um, trashed this disc which uh, seems to me so this is a verbatim disc it's just old and I've used it a lot can't see through the media, which is a start, because sometimes if the tracks are really badly messed up, you can actually see through the media, because um, the media itself is clear plastic with the uh, the magnetic fluff on the outside. So that's right, I'll come back and attack that again uh, when I get some more time. Anyway, good to have you along. Um, take care, and we'll catch you next time.